Welcome back, everyone. Brad and Greta Zood with Parenting with the Zoods podcast. We're super excited that you're here because on today's episode, we're going to talk about like the one thing that we've talked about like more times, I think, this week with our eight children than I think any other week. And it's a super important lesson that you have to teach your children um, as part of, I don't know, them having success in life with other human beings mm -hmm. and interacting mm -hmm. with other human beings. So if you're first, if this is your first time to uh, the podcast or the YouTube channel, welcome. Um, if you're listening on the podcast, you can head over to YouTube and actually see the video. For those of you seeing us right now on YouTube, fantastic. Don't forget to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. So we have right. eight children of our own. Mama looks fantastic. Number eight was just born. 12 days ago. 12 days ago, Little yeah. Miss Aubrey. So we have four boys and four girls under the age of 11. Everybody thinks, hey, are you done? You're all in down done? now. What? Don't what? you don't you know what causes that? <laughs> now, I'm a good looking guy. I mean, I, you know, what? What can everyone, I say? Everyone thinks it's me, but uh, that's, <laughs> it's not the kind of podcast this is. So, um, but, but today's episode, I want to talk about something because th this just keeps happening. And it's a life skill that we're trying to teach our children that everyone needs to teach their children. And it really stems from the old book. I wish I had a copy with me. I should have should have brought it. The old How to Win Friends and Influence People book. Mm. Um, you know, it's funny. When, when children are born, you know, the, the sin nature that we have really creeps up. Fast. Like fast. Yeah. Like we don't have to spend any time teaching our children how to hit, kick, nope. lie, cheat, steal. Mm -hmm. Like mine, they're... mine, mine, mine. I they're, mean, they're really good the first that. first words are almost mine, yeah. right? You know, they everybody that, knows that. Get that from their mother, right. not so much their father. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so what are the things then? It, and you would be you you would be shocked because you're probably sitting there thinking like, how can this even apply to eight kids? Because your eight children have such the opportunity to share and be patient and like, like literally wait in line right for dinner time and like all this kind of stuff. But our children can be so self-focused that when their friends come over, they're not really good friends. And it's amazing that being a good friend is actually a skill that we need to teach our children. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, so some, of our, some of our really good friends live literally down the street almost, a street over. And their girls come over to our house all the time. And when they come over... Our children's natural tendency is to themselves play with all the cool things, want to eat the cool snacks, want to be on the computer, all this kind of stuff. And we have to preach and teach into our children that what it means to be a good friend is to consider others and let others do the fun things first and help others have fun and do the things first or do the cool thing first or right. participate in what they want to participate in, not, hey, let's have these children over so I can have them watch me do what I want to do and not consider what they want to do. Right. So I think, you know, even adults and, and to have compassion for our children, you know, not get upset with them. Um, first of all, when we see this happening, you know, to have compassion on them because they don't have the life experience to, to know that, oh, well, if I treat someone this way, if I treat someone poorly or I don't, or I don't show them favor, um, I'm not going to have friends. Like, we as adults... We know we that. Can, we can look down the path. We've burned say, a few bridges <laughs> along the way that we, we probably regret. Yeah. So we can look down the path and say, well, this leads to this, leads to this, leads to no friends. But our children don't have that life experience necessarily. And uh, uh, so we have to not just jump with them and say, because it's tempting to just want to correct our kids and say, you know, how dare you? And, and you know, that was so rude of you. Um, but we need to take the time to step back and actually teach them and, um, and guide them through this process. You know, and I think that's, that's so common in all of our areas of parenting, you know, like to, to look at our kids and and almost give them, are you stupid or something? Like, <laughs> like how do you not know this? How do you not like, know? Like, where have you been? <laughs> right? Have we not yelled at you enough? 
Um, but but with like everything, we need to take that step back and start the training process, and that needs to be a loving and gentle process. Sure, and and one of the first ways that you can do that is is every most most children, all children, they have someone in their life who's mean to them, or you know, like our for example, our children don't like it when their friends are mean to them. And so we have to take a step back and help them put themselves in other people's shoes, right? Our, we as humans, but children especially, are very good at wearing only their own shoes. Except literally in our house, shoes are a big problem because we have like <laughs> five pairs each child and eight kids. It's like... You, yeah, you well, have 40 pairs of shoes. Yeah, it's rough. Maybe but, more. But we have to help accelerate and give them that life experience and say, hey, let's, listen, put yourself in someone else's shoes. How do you think that your friend felt when you were the one that jumped on the computer instead of asking her. You know, we were just outside swimming in a pool and in the backyard, just one of those little inflatable blow up ones because it was really hot. And our daughter had the hose and she had the hose like most of the time. And I said, I said, hey, Elon, come here a second because I was out watching him. And I said, hey, you know what? I bet it would be so much fun if your friend Lily held the hose for a while and sprayed the hose where she wanted to spray it and didn't just stand there for 45 minutes while she watched you have so much fun with the hose. Wouldn't that be great? And and it's in those moments that we have to help our children understand that A, life's not about them, uh, <laughs> which is still a struggle, uh, but B, show them examples of, hey, th this is how we be a good friend. Be the type of person that others want to be around. And the way you do that is you make it fun for other people. You don't just concern yourself with yourself having fun and getting everything that you want mm -hmm. and going from there. Yeah. And I think that it's really important to prep your kids before the guests even come over. Yes. And before, before they enter into this situation where they're like, I really want to do this. I really don't want to give it to them. I really don't want them to have the fun because I'm having so much fun. Um, so before you even get there, before it, with the, we're in that emotional state of pleasure or pain or whatever emotional state we're in, um, we need to prepare them so that they can think logically through that and not have to rein in the emotions yeah. in the moment. Yeah, good good parenting. And this, this is what we teach inside of our programs is like, Good parenting is executing the plan that you've previously planned. Okay, so when you think of parenting, a lot of times you think of like, ah, oh, we're just figuring all this stuff out on the fly. Well, good parenting is actually sitting down in a time of non-conflict. Like, that's probably in a time of non-conflict. Those are like six words. Those are probably like some of the six strongest words in all of parenting in a time of non-conflict. Whether it's, it's with your spouse or in your parenting, it's like... You need to prep and plan and head off things before they become a problem and not trying to just make decisions in the moment when tempers are mm -hmm. hot, when tempers are high, when there's spilled milk on the table, when there's mm -hmm. whatever, right in the middle of battle. That's the worst time I think non to be making is actually one, one word, like non. What's a hyphenated hyphen word? Conflict. It's like a two for, two for one. Yeah, so it's five, five. words. Five right. words. Yep. Yeah. I, I missed that day of fifth you, grade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Greta's is, I'm just the beauty. She's the brains, really. I mean, I'm just around for the good uh, looks. Whatever. I'm, just, I'm just kidding. So She's one of one of the favorite, my favorite things and my kids' favorite things is to tell stories. So I will tell stories. I will make up stories. And they just think it's the greatest. Um, You're a good storyteller, though. Like, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it, but you, you can. It doesn't seem like it. Well, you just said, like, ah, oh, I don't know, you know. <laughs> yeah. So they love when I make up stories, and um, and I always make it about a character quality. So, um, and it's always easier for someone to see when it's somebody else. Oh, you know, yeah. it's not easy to see when the story is yourself. Your right? own sin, blind. Yeah, no. Um, so when when I make up stories, I'll talk about you know this selfish little girl who did la la la, and um, and they're like. <gasps> What that is disgusting. Happened? That's sin. That's terrible. Oh, how could anybody want to be her friend? You know, and um, and then and then it's easy easier to relate that back to them, 
you know, because we've told the story of the non night time of non-conflict when everybody's having fun and everyone's really engaged and really enjoying it. Um, and then, you know, when there is that conflict, I can say, hey, remember that story that we talked about? Mm. Remember that story we told? You know, we don't want to be here, right? And no, don't want to be here. Okay. <laughs> Who do you want to be? So that's good stuff. Mm -hmm. So give pep talks. Okay. Yeah, like when we're at dinner, like, and, and we have the pleasure of a large family. So like every single thing we do requires an amazing amount of planning or else it's just like, but yeah, ba yeah battleships down. So like, yeah. so like, w here's our dinner progression. It's like, okay, we need to do a house cleanup before dinner. And then once the house cleanup is like 80% of the way done, then we're prepping on like what needs to happen next. And then like, We'll set the table and we'll do the chores. And then when we're at dinner, it's like, okay, when we're almost done with dinner, we're going to be given the instruction on what we want the next activity, the next cleanup activity to look mm -hmm. like. And then mm -hmm. it's just, we're always, it's like, it's like we live in 10 minute chunks. It's like, <laughs> it's like every eight and a half minutes in our home, there's like a pep talk. There's like a huddle. There's like an instruction. Yeah. Um, there's lots of instruction. I mean, there's instruction for one or two kids, but when you have eight, there's even more instruction always going out. So yeah, if, if each of our children only asked us 10 questions a day, <laughs> that'd be 80 questions fielded per day. But it's really more like each children asks 80 questions. Yeah, I'm like 80 <laughs> per hour. Times, times, oh. times eight. <laughs> yeah, but in, and that is one benefit of having a large family is that, you know, we're forced to have structure and we're forced to have a routine. And Children thrive on, on structure and routine. And, uh, and I think that if we hadn't had so many children, um, I would be kind of lazy about it. And it would probably be even more chaotic. So um, it's, like, it's like that thing if like, you want something done, give it to a busy person who's yeah. like already busy doing stuff. Yeah, that's like, that's like your whole life. Yeah. Your whole life. Yeah. But it's good. But it's good. You just, you know... You got a newborn baby that you're just recovering from, but oh, we just have to still take care of the seven other children. Yeah. It goes back to like when we first had our baby, like our first baby or our second baby. It's like, oh, we need someone to come and watch the other baby because baby number two is just <laughs> taking up so much of our time. And now it's like. Now I'm like, well, you know what? Oh, newborn babies are great. They sleep for two hours every three hours. And yeah. It's fantastic. No big deal. No big deal. So, all right. Well, there you have it, guys. Pep talk and train your children to be the type of person that others want to be around because having friends doesn't just come naturally. So don't forget to head over to YouTube if you're not there. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to the podcast. It means the world to us. Check out the links below if you want to learn how to get baby sleeping, if you have toddler questions, parenting questions, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. All right. See ya. Bye.